Good afternoon, this is JJ DiGeronimo, and I am here today with the women of Together We Seek. In Together We Seek, we are exploring a variety of energy practices and energy practitioners. And today I am honored to have with me Sam Smeltzer. Sam and I met a few months ago through her podcast, and we have continued to stay in touch. And in doing so, I've learned about some of her amazing practices that she does in her offices and also takes into corporations. So Sam, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you so much for having me, JJ. I'm really excited to be here. Oh gosh. So tell us, tell us who are you? Who's Sam and how did you get on this path? Yeah, I think that's, um, that's always the question for all of us. (laughs) And, uh, I think that I'm excited that we're having this conversation today and not five years ago when I kind of started this path. But as most of us know, when we are discovering who we are authentically, usually we figure out that there was traces and whispers of it when we were little. Um, And that was true for me. So when I was very young, like four, five, six, uh, I was what I guess you would label now as a super sensitive child. Um, And I didn't know what was happening. I was hearing voices. I was seeing things. And as a child, I thought that was normal. Um, And I can remember in about fifth grade sharing with my friends um, the things that I was experiencing and them looking at me like I was not with it. Um, And at that point, I think I started to shut everything down. Um, And it's really interesting because... I talk to my mother now who kind of affirms these experiences that I have as a child that are kind of blurry. Um, And she says, you know, I just didn't know what to do for you. Like nobody gives you a guidebook when your child is saying she's seeing things, she's hearing things, she's feeling things. And she's like, and I didn't really even have the internet at the time to Google it, like what you could do now. Uh, And it's always interesting because now she's finding resources and saying, there's all these women that are meeting that have things that are happening. Like what you experience as a child, you can find like your tribe. And I'm like, I'm way ahead of you, mom. (laughs) So, you know, I say all this because I started to shut this down, um, being sensitive. And then I started down this path of traditional success. So what we're taught by the external world, what we should be when we grow up. And I became obsessed with it. And because I am a empath, someone who can absorb people's emotions, I also have very powerful mirror nodes, which means I can mirror back behaviors of people so I can fit in with you. So I look like almost like I have multiple personality when I was at my peak in networking. And what I discovered was after doing this for decades, um, I felt so lost. Like I couldn't even identify who I was and what was going to make me happy. And really the turning point for me was being in my marriage. Like I didn't even know who I was in my marriage and who my husband was loving. Like I felt like I was just this weird output to the world that everyone else wanted. And I didn't understand really why I existed. Um, and at that point, I guess you could say I had like a mental breakdown. I left my job. And my husband said, why don't you start being an entrepreneur? And I kind of laughed at him. And I'm in my 30s. What 30-year-old is an entrepreneur who takes advice in the business world from a 30-year-old? And he said, just humor me and do it. And uh, when he did that, what I found myself doing is having to figure out who I was and what I wanted to offer to the world. And my gifts and sensitivities started to awaken. And these incredible teachers started to show up. Um, And what I found myself doing is finding that my work was always meant to have energy work and people and to be a healer. Um, And we're going to touch on a lot of the the, the milestones of that journey as we continue our conversation today. But that's where I am now today. I'm authentically 100% Sam, everything from little Sam to today. Um, And uh, yeah, just 100% me. I think this year has been almost my everyone has called it my coming out party because I've fully embraced who I am as a person, not these random individuals that people have met over the years. <laughs> oh my goodness. That's amazing. And how long did that take? How long did that take for you? Well, it's still actively going, sure. um, but this has now been seven years in the making. Yes. I love to point that out because I think a lot of people think it's seven months or 17 months and you know, very similar. It's years and years of self-evolution and digging through, I think oftentimes the darkness to shine the light. And it takes a lot of time and self-discovery and alone time too. Yeah. 
Yeah, it's uh, and it's usually a lot uglier before it gets a lot prettier. <laughs> <laughs> I think that validates a lot of us. So I appreciate that. So tell me a little bit. I mean, today we're going to talk about chi and that's where you are right now. So maybe let's start there and then you can tell us a little bit about is that like your first energy practice or did it evolve into that? Yeah. So we're going to talk about Qi today, specifically in the form of Qigong. I am a certified medical Qigong therapist. Uh, actually, I have my master's and I'm in the process of completing my doctoral this year. So at the end of this year, I'll be a doctor uh, in medical Qigong. And basically, this practice is all about cultivating Qi in the meridians, which are the pathways that most of you are probably familiar with if you've had acupressure or acupuncture, which are two other branches of Chinese medicine. Medical Qigong is just one of those branches as well. Um, but I don't poke anybody with needles. I do periodically do acupressure, but mostly our practice is done away from the body using our bodies as the vessel to channel energy from the sources of the sky, which the Chinese call the heavens, and the earth, mother earth, using both of those energies plus a divine source to heal the body. And if you think about acupuncture and acupressure, the specific points that they use are actually doorways and gateways that we're able to access and tap into the healing energy of the body. Mm -hmm. um, so that is what I am doing. As far as how I started with energy work, um, I'll be honest that I started working with a holistic life coach because when my sensitivity started to reactivate seven years ago, I became very overwhelmed and I was very frightened because I, nobody prepares you for all the things that you're seeing and hearing and all that kind of stuff. Um, and it was actually that team of holistic practitioners at one center that said, you are a gifted healer. And we're going to do we're going to do baby steps with you for you to be OK with doing energy work. And they actually did do just that. I went through like a Reiki one class. I got to hang out with some holistic practitioners and they just let me play where they gave me the permission to be OK when I had the universe kind of extend the invitation to go learn Qigong. That's amazing. And was Qigong a practice of somebody in that holistic center or did it come to you? It came to me. Um, so as many of you know, or will know soon, if you're starting to explore energetic modalities, there are several out there and they are all extremely awesome. When I realized I wanted to be a healer, I was so overwhelmed and Qigong wasn't even something that was on the map. Like I didn't even know it existed. And I went to a little open house where they had $20 tarot readings. And this woman who is absolutely amazing, she's my astrologer to this day, and we meet every year and do planning for my year. But she flipped over a card and says, you're trying to figure out what's next for you and your growth uh, for education. And I said, yeah, absolutely. And she goes, there is a little Asian man here that is so happy that you're going to pick up the healing practice again, because half of my heritage is Filipino. And she said... <laughs> What you're seeking is Qigong. And I was like, what? Qi what? <laughs> How do you, can somebody spell that and write that down? And uh, she was, she went through the rest of the reading and I said, well, thank you. And I couldn't wait to go like Google on my phone. You know, what is this thing that she's talking about? And she put her hand out and said, where are you going? What are you going to do? And I said, I'm going to go Google. And she says, oh, oh, my child, we do not find our teachers using Google. You give me your business card and I will find your teacher. And she did. Monday, she put me in contact and said, this is your teacher. And he ended up being an hour away. And I signed up for his class and walked into his room that next season and uh, never looked back. <laughs> wow. Well, yeah. wow, that that's pretty. I mean, what an amazing astrologer, right? So astrologer slash connector. Incredible, yes. incredible. So, you know, did you have doubts? So you're going through the practices. Like, are you questioning, like, am I crazy? Who does this? What am I think I'm doing? Because now you're supposed to be an entrepreneur and off the side of your desk, you're going to Qigong classes. Yes. Yeah. I mean, I was in class with nurses acupuncturists, there was no HR practitioners or business consultants in my classes. And even my teacher would always be like, every time I come back for class, so why did, why are you here? Like, just, just trying to understand what's happening in your brain. 
but he got very good at realizing that I was always skeptic. I just always wanted every practice skeptic. And he would just say, Sam, just trust me. And if you don't feel anything and nothing happens, then we'll talk about it. But don't try to doubt it before we do it. And we did. I mean, my gosh, I just I remember the first day we learned distance healing and we had to channel energy and put them into dolls so we could treat your energy using a human like form. It just helps us be more intentional about what we're doing to the body. But this guy comes in with a, you know, a bin full of baby dolls. And he said he could bring a teddy bear to class. And I thought, teddy bears? Like, for real? Like, what am I doing? I don't understand what's happening here. And he was just like, Sam, just trust me. Just trust me. And it was one of the most amazing experiences of my life. And every time I went, it just got more and more amazing. Um, So it's just, it's an incredible blessing. It clearly was this missing piece that was just waiting for me. Wow. Well, I'm sure people listening to this now or several months or even years from now may want to find you. So let me just get that right out of the way. How do they find you if they're like, Sam, I am having this epiphany. Can you guide me? Yeah, well, absolutely. Well, number one, check out my profile on your amazing community because all of that will be there and connect with me there. But also you can check out my website, which is heartcenter.com. That's H-R-A-R-T. So like H-R-Art-Center.com. That's amazing. So how, okay, so now we're fast forwarding because one of the things that you've done, which I rarely see, is you have combined energy work with corporate America. So how how did that come about? So if we go back to the very first day that I started my business and I thought, what do I want to offer the world? One of the things that I was very passionate about working in the world of business as an HR practitioner was trying to get employees to be engaged. So up to that point, it had been like 20 years of research data where the engagement numbers hadn't changed. So no matter what they did, pizza parties, gift cards, all those traditional things we were hearing about, it wasn't making a sustainable difference. And that really bothered me that we couldn't do something in the work environment that kept people wanting to be there and feeling like we cared about them. Um, And so when I started studying Qigong and I started studying Qi, which is energy, it is our energetic body. It's what makes you come alive so that you're not just a physical body and a spiritual being, this emotional um, energetic piece, this thing that makes us a living, breathing, unique individual. That's amazing. I realized we're not taking care of that. And when we're talking about engagement and what's happening emotionally or mentally, it is heavily tied to the energy body of that individual. On top of that, when you take an organization or community, that is a collection of energy. So when we're talking about corporate culture, Mm -hmm. we're talking about guiding and navigating that collective energy that you have hopefully intentionally designed as you've recruited and made the decision to hire people or terminate people. So I started to very clearly see that what HR should be doing in the workplace is caring for the energetic body that's in these corporations. And we're just not there yet. We just have this massive gap. And I truly believe it's because of energy. And so I, yes, have been the crusade of taking it in there. I've gotten laughed at in speaking engagements. I'll just put it out there. I have a new book coming out in the summer. And um, it talks about that's really kind of what fueled my passion here is there's a lot of people who have felt the same way. And this makes a lot of sense. And just no one has created the arena or space to talk about it. And so now I have the privilege of working with leaders and HR practitioners who have been experiencing things like I was when I was a little girl with no one to guide them and now hopefully giving some context so they can help heal the workspace. Well, you know, we're moving and we've already sort of evolved into the age of Aquarius. So it's innovative ways to live. And so it's probably no surprise that you're bringing this forward well before it's ready so that you can meet them when they're where they're at. And I think it's just I'm so inspired by it, honestly, because I think that bridge of the masculine energy that really manages corporate America and a lot of feminine energy that is more to do with healing, connecting to Mother Nature, the energetic flow. Not that there isn't um, men that do that, too. It just seems to take both energies to actually make that happen. Absolutely. And 
if you look at an organizational structure, HR has typically been labeled the mother of the organization. Um, so I don't think that was coincidence. And, you know, in Chinese medicine, the thing that drew me in is it's all about obtaining balance. And so, yes, we can talk about divine feminine, divine masculine, but also just talking about that energy not being balanced, not being balanced in men. Like men are meant mm -hmm. to have a feminine aspect as well. Our society does not promote that, which is why we have other things that are happening. Um, but same thing with women and, and we're not meant to be extreme one way or another. In fact, what they teach us in Chinese medicine and the Tao is once we reach that level of enlightenment, gender is, is no longer present. It's no longer anything that matters. We're not identifying by that. We are all a collective whole being with everyone. Oh, that's so beautiful. That's so beautiful. So, you know, as you're thinking about this now more than ever, why do you think we need to be more intuitive or more aware of our energy? You know, um, I think that our society teaches us that it's not good to go inward. Um, and I know that I was just as guilty with it. And I think, you know, the, the common pleasures that we have in life are the perfect example of this, you know, to engage in alcohol on a regular basis, which I still enjoy myself a good glass of wine. So I'm not telling people that drinking is bad. I always like have to make that disclaimer because sometimes people think that I'm in here telling you to give up all your drinks, but that's not what I'm saying. But you know, using that to rest, binge watching TV, binge watching, you know, what type of TV you're exposing yourself to. All of these things that we do, even excess exercise, which also I know everyone who's a personal trainer is going to yell at me about that too, um, which activity is good, but we are taught to do excess yang energy. So all those things, a lot of them are almost masculine responses, whereas going inward, yin energy feminine energy uh, is associated with night and darkness and stillness, things that as a society we have said is scary and fearful. And I think right now it's more important than ever because of the pandemic. You know, we have quarantines. We were forced to be in isolation. And for the first time, many people don't know what to do with that space. Me personally, I thought it was like the best experience ever to not have to do anything. And sometimes I like we had a COVID scare in our in our family, and I was like, "Oh my gosh, we're gonna have to quarantine for ten days!" I got so excited, and then it was a negative test, so that fell through. Whereas I know other people like lost who they were, and really, what I see there is not a loss of identity, but almost where I was seven years ago when realizing. I don't really know who I am because I've never really taken the time and space to go inside and get to know mm -hmm. that inner guy, that inner self. And so when we're tapping into intuition, we're tapping into authenticity. Uh, and I think it's not, it's not some magical power. We all have those skill sets. We were just, were never taught how to use them. It's, it's the pathway of the soul to communicate, you know, so we can either be this empty kind of vessel that just kind of functions dies and then we have to relive and try to work out this karmic energy again in another lifetime or we can dive in and learn the deep lessons and really be present in life and grow and evolve which is what we're meant to do as spiritual beings as the 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 self that's bigger than us um i'll tell you that i do this beautiful practice that I've learned this protocol. It's called splitting the Tai Chi pole, which sounds really awful, but it's not awful. Um, but the Tai Chi pole is basically the channel in the body that runs the length of the spine, which is how the soul travels into the body. It also, the chakra gates lay on the Tai Chi pole. Um, and so when we split the Tai Chi pole, what it actually means is revealing who you truly are. Uh, and I get the privilege of doing these protocols with people and I get to see these beautiful images of who these people are, not just this lifetime, but all the lifetimes before. And sometimes there are these beautiful art galleries. Sometimes we're in a forest with all these doors. Sometimes I'm in a, a beautiful ballroom with tables that have people that they love from all different lifetimes. But you get to recognize that these people are so much more than what we see right here in these little Zoom boxes or screens. We are this more complex, beautiful individual that you know I would not have had an appreciation for if I hadn't been exposed to 
energy. That's a beautiful, that's beautiful. It's so profound in some respects, like how could that be? But it's also so exciting, like is that possible and is that reality? And for you it is, which makes it just such a beautiful thing. So in a few minutes I'm going to be opening for questions if anyone has it, but I guess I'd like to go back to Chi a little bit more because I think for some of us it's brand new to us. So if I had to explain it to somebody later today, how would I go about doing that? So I would just say chi is energy. So we know we know energy exists. Energy runs almost everything in our lives, and that makes no difference than in us. So if you think about a car with fuel, chi is our fuel. It's uh, it's our battery that we recharge when we sleep at night. Um, it is also, if you want to experience it, it's those tingling sensations that sometimes you feel in your body. It is if you meditate and you get to that space where your whole body feels like it's humming, that's awakening the energetic meridians and pathways and you sitting there with them and feeling that flow and circulation of that energy. So the other way I would say it is blood is the physical manifestation of chi in the body. So if you look at blood veins and how that pumps through, chi is doing the same thing, but on the energetic pathways. And all you have to do is type in acupuncture, energetic meridians, and you'll see all kinds of maps. And then it's really interesting to, you know, if you feel a, a tingling sensation or almost like a, a shooting of energy going down your, your uh, leg or something to pull up and look at that map to find out if that was a meridian. Most times you'll see that it travels right down, like almost like a hose when it gets unkinked and it shoots through. And we unkink them when we do yoga and all kinds of stuff. Like, Regardless if you do Qigong or not, your chi is still moving and you're still cultivating. We do it all the time with all different kinds of things. All right, great. Well, I want to go back to an energy question, but okay, so that's chi, the energy inside yeah. your body that moves throughout your being. Now, what is Qigong? So Qigong, if we were to literally translate it is basically mastering chi. So how do you move it and uh, and do that? So if you think of like a Qigong master which if you ever are bored and want to go on YouTube and Google true Qigong masters, they're the ones that are almost like Jedis in real time. They can set things on fire and make things levitate and heal all kinds of crazy things. So, um, but when we talk about Qigong, it's really about mastering your own energy. And mm. the ultimate goal of medical Qigong is to obtain a conscious inner harmony which means you're fully aware of what it's like to be at peace in your body. Mm. So uh, when we talk about Qigong, it is learning through uh, basically three main practices, purging, removing things that do not serve us from our energetic meridians, tonifying, so filling up and pulling in new energy so that we can be restored and renewed, and then regulating, which is basically cycling and circulating it through so that you don't have any pockets of excess or deficiency so that you can run like a balanced machine. Mm -hmm. um, and so through those three kind of attributes, we kind of master our own energy, which is what Qigong is. That's amazing. And if you're interested and you're online, you want to ask a question, you can unmute mute and ask. Um, I'm going to ask you one more question, though, because I just... You know, I was sort of under the belief that you're kind of, you have the energy you have and you can transform it and clean it and preserve it. But are you, is it, can you create more energy inside of you or is that a set state? You can absolutely increase your energy. You can absolutely do that. Um, we are born with a set amount of energy and Chinese medicine, we call it Jing. It's your Jing level. But through cultivation practices and tonification, you can bring in more energy. So you can actually become a more energetic, like energized being doing Qigong. Uh, and if you want to experience this, so, so one of the ways that we naturally do Qigong, you don't even have to do anything. Go for a hike in nature, <laughs> particularly around pine trees, and just notice the sensations around you because automatically you're going to absorb from these beautiful, amazing trees that are really healing. That's one of their main purposes in life is to heal that way and um, see how you feel after it. And usually you feel more energized, you feel lighter. And it's like you got a Qigong treatment, but by the forest. 
That's amazing. That's amazing. So I listen to Steve Noble all the time. He's just awesome meditation. Is there somebody that you listen to if you're trying to just meditate or be quiet, um, a Qigong master that is somebody that you would recommend for women listening? So for meditation and Qigong, we do it mostly in silence, mm. uh, in a standing posture. So there's not really one to listen to. Yeah. However, there is an amazing practitioner named Daisy Lee, I believe. She has been one of the few practitioners that has specifically focused her Qigong practices on creating flows for women. Mm. Um, because one of the things with Qigong, and I will say this, it's Chinese medicine, very masculine. Um, that was, it was masculine was what was held onto as far as tradition goes. So if you think about all the emperors, everything patriarchy was basically what we held onto. So a lot of the feminine teachings were lost. Uh, and so we have some women that are stepping in to talk about, you know, like the fact that we have a uterus is a very big difference. And it also means that we're very, very powerful. Um, and I actually am working with a teacher now that is just enlightening me to this. And I knew this kind of intuitively, um, but my eyes have just been opened to how powerful we are as human beings just from gender. So I do highly recommend like a Daisy Lee because she pays respect to the fact of what makes us different. Well, I definitely know you're coming up with a new book, so I can't wait to talk about what that with you here in this community, but also as you have Zoom activities are ways that women can join remotely. We definitely want to make sure that we're aware of those because I think all of us could really benefit from doing more chi. And I think to your point about the uterus and women, one of the reasons that I opened, you know, Together We Seek online is because I do think that a lot of us have forgotten our power and that by bringing us together in a safe place and just talking about energy freely and our journeys, it gives us permission to seek. And I think for many of us, once we start seeking that energy, the soul contract, the journey of why we're here will become more evident. The ideas and the practice that you have, um, how, how are you impacting or are able to impact uh, an HR environment or a, a company environment because I I retired one year ago after forty plus years in yeah. in the IT world and um, you know I'm fortunate that I could retire and you know perhaps it was time but it was also the culmination of a, a year plus of uh, major toxicity that uh, I would not I would rather not have gone through. <laughs> Yeah. Um, and that represented what the first year of, of the pandemic. Yeah. So um, I'm just interested in, OK, what what happens now, like with respect to you and um, that vast world that needs someone like you to influence them? Yeah. So, um, yeah, there's definitely a large need. <laughs> <laughs> um, so number one thing is, you know, our, my work, I'm very big on qualifying to make sure that we spend time with the organizations that really do want to support their people. Cause everyone says that yet yeah, we have found that's not always the case. Um, and I very mindful of my energy. So usually, and I'll just put this out there. If we were ever to show up in your organization, uh, and we usually get to meet with all staff. And I usually do say, if we disappear <laughs> from here, it means that us and your leadership have seen things differently. We did not leave you and you can always reach out to me personally, but we just decided to part ways. And I do that because if you're trapped in a toxic work environment, I can at least help you sustain it uh, so that you're not beat down because that's not fair to you if they're not choosing to take care of you. But as far as what has been happening uh, with the clients that I've been doing, it's basically one of two pathways. Number one, I've been detoxing and restoring the energy for leaders and HR practitioners who themselves have been beat down from the pandemic. So they can't even function to make things better. Um, and so we actually go through a eight week intensive uh, boot camp where they basically focus on their energy and commit to it and meet every week uh, and really just release all of it. 
uh, and then they get back to a place where they can actually perform and manifest change, which has been the hardest thing with the pandemic. There's just not enough time for them. They've become like nurses on top of everything else they've been doing. Um, once we do that, then I go into the organization and I help them learn to read the energy of the people in the space. Um, and so usually I can, I can go through the space. So if you were there, usually I could be like, well, that energy is really low. Is that generated <laughs> by uh, a leader that's there or the space? Like what is happening in the actual context so that we can elevate the energy? And we basically start to implement things using the energy as the measurement if we are improving. Um, and so I will say that I am blessed that I have leaders who really trust me because it is, it's just like, as we're talking about this stuff, is that even possible? Can we even do mm -hmm. that? I'm going like yesterday, I just coached an executive leader and I said, we're going to put all of your, your leaders as animals to just talk about it from a, from a completely different aspect than what you're used to. And so she described them all as animal spirits and then she thought, what did I just do for the last two hours? But she had such a great understanding of why her HR practitioner is like a wombat, which is so weird to me. But um, really starting to open their eyes to realize that these gut feelings that we've all had as leaders and HR practitioners, they're valid. And they were trying to tell us that something was wrong. Um, and so, yeah, so it's really unique to every organization. It's about trust, but yeah, and it's a lot of work. So, I mean, even... There are people who are getting ready to retire and I don't, I know that they're not going to feel the change because I mean, culture change is anywhere from five if we're lucky and really aggressive to 10 years to 15 before we actually start to feel it. Wow. Well, I think that's when you focus on the individual. I mean, the individual needs to focus on themselves and their own thing. Yes. But yes. thanks. Yeah. Thank you. Wow, that is beautiful. Well, I really appreciate your time. Is there anything I should have asked you or something that you want to include for anyone who may be listening now or later? The only thing, and I kind of loosely kind of talked about this, but, you know, Qigong is, yes, in a traditional energetic form in person and very potent. However, some of the most powerful sessions I have had have been at a distance. And so just because you don't have a medical Qigong practitioner right nearby, there are several very talented practitioners that will do distance work. So if you're intrigued, reach out, whether it's to me or if you want me to give you some referrals of other people, I'd be happy to do that. Um, but don't let, because there's no one close by to, to not try this amazing practice and take care of your energy. Well, Sam, we're so honored and I would love to invest in you to invest in us. So I definitely want to make that happen for our community. I feel like we're moving down the path. Shannon and Caitlin and I have been talking about creating essentially workshops where people can actually do practices so they can feel it for themselves. And I hope that you will be um, one of the first to help us make that happen. Yeah, I love it. That's great. And I think we have a few more questions. So in just the last few minutes we have, let's uh, I'm gonna open the floor. Yeah, I had a question. So I know chi is about like restoring the energy within the body. And I know like some things like traumas and whatnot manifest in the body. Are there any like physical benefits as well to chi that are not, um, I guess, physical, mental, like what would be benefits? Because you said medical qigong as well. And I'm not sure if there's a difference or if that's just like another term that you use as an alternative. So, yeah, no, great question, Caitlin. So, um, yeah, because this is like this big bucket that I just opened up. But so Qigong in its true form is like the exercises. So if you think of like Tai Chi, you could see people doing Qigong, like it's it's focused on the energy cultivation. Medical Qigong is when we take it into energetic treatment. So it's when you have a practitioner actually working with you to take care of your energy. Now, as far as the benefits, we treat three bodies, uh, which are called the, the Jing, Qi, and Shen. The Jing is the physical body, the Qi is the energetic, emotional, mental body, and then the Shen is your spiritual body. So from a Chinese perspective, they believe that uh, any disturbance or stagnation that happens in your energetic field, when it sits for too long, it becomes a physical stagnation. So that means like creaky knees, you know, weird pains that you've started to develop. Those are all results of something that was not processed or worked through. Um, most of the work that I do is on the energetic 
emotional, mental level. So it is releasing trauma. So I've worked with a lot of people who have uh, childhood traumas that they didn't even know that they had. And that was what was causing the stagnation, being able to go into the body and start to get it to release. Uh, then they started to have the memories back and were able to work with a uh, counselor or therapist to really process what happened to them as a child. Uh, same thing with sexual traumas, all those kinds of things. It is a really great way where maybe you're hitting a block in a therapy session uh, and you can't get somewhere to have someone physically move that energy for you. Because the words and the processings that we do through those modalities are just as beneficial, but sometimes they take a little bit longer. Whereas I can pull things out that you don't really want to talk about, don't have to talk about because you've already got it figured out and then make space for the stuff that you really got to focus on, whether that's not processing the grieving of the death of a loved one from 10 years ago. Um, and just to give you an idea, we have five organs that hold excessive emotions when we don't process them. So like the lungs are grief. Uh, so if you think about when people develop asthma, when people think about even bad allergies or uh, breathing issues, you know, have they had a lot of sadness in their life? The liver is anger. So angry drunks, <laughs> uh, when we drink because, you know, stress and frustration are there. Um, the kidneys are your fear. And also that's also where your main energy levels lie. And so at the end of the day, when you're tired, if you ever notice that you have like lower back pain, it's probably right around the kidneys and that's because your energy has dropped. Um, and also if you think about when you have excess fear, notice if you feel it in that lower abdomen area, uh, it's just all tied there. So it's really interesting, the emotional aspect. Um, and then obviously then the spiritual, which I'll be honest, a lot of people are not there to work on the spiritual because we have to clean up so much on the lower levels. <laughs> That's so amazing. That's so amazing. Does that help Caitlin? Yeah, that helps a lot. And I feel like that makes a lot of sense because at the end of the day, it's always my lower back and I'm just like, I'm tired. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so I feel like that makes a lot of sense. Thank you so much. Yeah, you're very welcome. Well, this was absolutely incredible. I'm so honored that our paths have crossed and I'm even more excited about who may find this this week, next week, and years to come, because I think for many of us, we're all seeking ways to become more aware of how we're functioning in the world and how we're connected to something bigger. So thank you so much, Sam, for joining us here in the community, Together We Seek Online. And I'm already looking forward to doing a workshop or practice. Yes, me too. Thank you so much, JJ. This has been so much fun. Oh, thank you again. Well, we're signing off and we'll see you again next time. Thank you, everybody.